It opened in 1977 as the 91st station in the subway network. This station features statues that are inspired by the palace Makalös that was located above in the King's Garden. Olá pessoal, bem-vindos a mais um vídeo nesse canal. Nós somos cidadãos do terceiro mundo e nesse canal nós reagimos e aprendemos sobre o primeiro mundo. E nesse vídeo a gente vai reagir às artes que existem nas estações de metrô de Estocolmo. Portanto, pedimos que, por favor, você considere se inscrever, ativar as notificações e também fazer mais sugestões aqui embaixo nos comentários. E agora vamos para a reação. Today we're going to have a look at the longest art gallery in the world. No, don't go away. This is going to be awesome. We're going to have a look at a 110 km wow. long art gallery called the Stockholm Subway. Nossa, Stockholm é Subway is often featured in lists of the world's most beautiful subway stations. It was opened in 1941 and the first station with art was the Central Station that opened in 1957. The latest station that opened was Skarpnäck in 1994, but that one just looks like a weird Red cane, yeah. so we don't care about that one. We're gonna have a look at the top 10 stations. Speaking of weird red canes, wow. this is Solna Station. Solna Station opened in 1975 and it incredible. features art inspired by the 17th debate about the deforestation and pollution. It features a lot of views of Sweden in general and it's almost <laughs> like a nostalgic view of the contemporary Sweden of the 70s. This station serves as documentation of its time, and it is a pretty impressive station. The thing is, I am a bit biased. I used to live here, so I'm pretty tired of this artwork. But if I try to be objective, then I have to say that it is pretty cool. Fun fact, this station is located 16 and a half meters below sea level, and it's one of the five deepest subway stations in Stockholm. Wow, que legal isso! Wow, isso é muito interessante. Porque na primeira estação de metrô que a gente vê, mas há uma preocupação não apenas pela questão de, é, artística, né, de colocar uma arte ali, mas de tentar passar alguma mensagem, transmitir uma mensagem como é o caso da poluição, por exemplo. É verdade, e eu confesso que eu amo isso sobre os países de primeiro mundo, porque eles são muito preocupados em, é, sobre essas questões de desmatamento, e isso é uma coisa muito incrível e é muito importante. Imagina isso inserido no contexto artístico dentro de um metrô na Suécia. É algo maravilhoso. Nekrosen, the water wow. lily, also opened in 1975, and the artwork here is obviously inspired by water lilies. The original design for this place was harder and more rigid, but they wanted something more fluid and organic, and that's how we ended up with a lily pond design. The name for this place comes from a water lily pond located above us, but they were considering changing the name to Filmstaden after a cinema also located above. However, the municipality won't pay for it, so it's probably not gonna have a name change anytime soon. <laughs> Tiensta subway station opened in 1975 when the entire blue line was opened. The artist behind everything was Helga Henschen and uh, she made it as a tribute to immigrants. The wow. station is filled oh with uh, different isso. cultures and languages and, uh, well, animals as well. É um uh, let's look at this wolf, for example. Is it a wolf? I can't really tell. Some people say that Tiensta is a no-go zone in Stockholm, but ah, uh, seems pretty safe so far. Maybe I should do a separate video about no-go zones in Stockholm. Ooh. Isso seria interessante. This is the subway station for getting to the Royal Institute of Technology, and it opened in 1973. The artist behind this station is called Lennart Mörk, which actually means Lennart oh, Dark. Oh, hmm, not a bad name. The artwork is inspired by the elements and the natural laws of physics. I approve. There are so many cool details and I love the rippling effect you get of the stone with the, the painting on top of it, especially the blue parts. It's like being underwater. I miss being underwater. Ah, I want to go diving. Wow! É incrível como ainda é possível se, se, se inspirar na ciência para fazer trabalhos artísticos. Isso realmente é maravilhoso, porque é, 
É incrível como os países de primeiro mundo se preocupam em oferecer uma qualidade de vida para os seus cidadãos, porque aqui, você, enquanto você vai pegar um, um metrô, que pode ser uma coisa muito estressante em muitas partes do mundo, inclusive aqui no nosso país, o Brasil, é uma coisa muito estressante, as pessoas ficam muito estressadas. E você vê isso e vê o quanto é possível oferecer qualidade de vida até em um momento como esse. Porque um lugar, sim, pode melhorar seu dia. Então, você vê qualidade de vida nas pequenas coisas, nesses países. Isso é uma coisa fascinante. The next spot is actually a subway station that never opened. Schumlinge was going to be a new part of Stockholm in the late 70s with the government buildings and administration buildings. And he actually built a subway station there. But plans changed. Instead, it's now a quiet little you forest area to. and trains pass by the station without ever stopping. Or do they? It's rumored that there's a subway train called Silverpilen, the Silver Arrow. If you see this train late at night and you board it, you will notice that the passengers are surprisingly quiet and surprisingly pale. The train won't stop at the normal stations, but eventually it will stop. And it will stop at Schimlinge. All the other passengers will get off, but don't do it, because Silvepilen is the train that transports the dead to the afterlife, and Schimlinge is the station wow, of the dead. Isso é interessante porque há uns dias atrás eu descobri que tem em uma outra cidade, é, em São Paulo, que tem uma conversa sobre um, uma, uma linha de ônibus também que parece que leva para um outro lugar, meio que fora desse mundo. Então é muito legal como em muitos lugares tem essas lendas urbanas, né? Isso é um pouco engraçado. Rådhuset Town Hall was opened in 1975 and Sigvard Olsson, the artist behind all of this, tried to inject a lot of humor into his work. <laughs> For example, he added baskets that he called the usual shopping bag of the 1700s and 1800s. And he also tried to inject the art with inspiration from what lay above. These boxes are called paramot, and that's a specific size for hay transportation, because there used to be a lot of farmers and markets above. And this sunken chimney illustrates all the industries that were here in the 19th century. I love how this station combines art and history in such a beautiful way. É incrível porque ao mesmo tempo que você parece que está dentro de uma caverna, um lugar que é com aspecto muito muito antigo. Você encontra ali uma escada rolante. Olha que loucura isso. Isso é muito louco. Sim, e sem esquecer as várias formas artísticas que cada estação de metrô oferece. Sim, porque não são só apenas artes, mas são coisas temáticas, né? Isso é muito legal. <música> Centralen station opened in 1957, but it changed its name to Tia Centralen in 1958. Oh, bloody hell, there's a train coming. You're not gonna hear anything. <laughs> oh. The T was added as a shorthand for a Tunnelbane Centralen, the subway central. This is the only station where all lines meet, but it wasn't the first station. That was a Fridemsplan in 1952. This was the first station é with artwork though. It started in 1957, lugar, but it's been added upon up until 2017. I think some of the newer, cooler stuff are the silhouettes of workers up uh, one floor above. That's really neat and... Uh, It's good to honor all the thousands who died to make Stockholm subway. <laughs> This station opened in 1973 and it's underground inside a mountain under the Here block called the Beaver. The art is very inspired by Olympic themes. Well, as would be obvious from a big Olympic poster Whoa. towards one of the exits. I'm guessing that some of the artwork is pretty popular during Pride. Oh, and there's a dance rehearsal going on as well. You get that as a bonus. <laughs> This station is often featured in lists of the world's most beautiful subway stations, but it's not really my top choice. It looks pretty cool, but there are some even more awesome stations coming up. Mm -hmm. 
Kungsträdgården, The King's Garden, is at the end of the Blue Line. It opened in 1977 as the 91st station in the subway network. This station features statues that are inspired by the palace Makalös that was located above in the King's Garden. You can also see an archaeological dig site here with actual items taken from the Stockholm City Museum. This statue is apparently a warrior god that used to be featured in the House of Nobility. And there are modern fossils embedded in the floor at various places. This station opened in 1977, but uh, one of the entrances wasn't open until 1987 because of the Battle of the Elms. They wanted to cut down 1,300-year-old elm trees to make room for the subway entrance, but people did not like that. It caused huge protests and actual riots because people didn't feel like they had enough say in municipal politics. And they actually succeeded because the subway entrance was moved a little bit to the east. Or that direction. <laughs> <laughs> Uau! Que legal! Esse é totalmente diferente. It's Sim. finally happened. We've come to my number one spot, Turil's Plan. This station opened in 1952, but the artwork is not from 1952. No, 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 no. The artist who cult Gren added a wooden sun in 1975. But I don't even know where that is, and that's not why I'm here. Nope, the pixel art, that's what I'm here for. Made by Lars Arrhenius in 2008. This is what I call art. Incrível. Incrível. Wow. I hope you enjoyed this look at the world's longest art gallery. Like and subscribe, but most importantly, have a great day. Wow. Wow. Eu adorei isso porque são milhares, milhares de quilômetros com pura arte. E, e é uma coisa, em cada estação é algo temático totalmente diferente. Isso é incrível porque aqui a gente não tem muito disso, né? As pessoas acabam ficando muito estressadas e eu imagino que se fizesse esse tipo de investimento aqui, eu acho que ia melhorar e muito a qualidade de vida das pessoas. Essa é uma das diferenças que eu vejo de um país de primeiro mundo para um país de terceiro mundo. E cada detalhe é, tem investimento e isso pode mudar muito a vida das pessoas que moram ali. Sem dúvidas, eu concordo plenamente com tudo que você disse, inclusive porque em nosso país nós temos um dos piores transportes públicos do mundo, então a gente consegue imaginar a, o, a circulação de pessoas nesses transportes públicos é muito grande. E geralmente essas pessoas usam esses transportes justamente para se deslocar ao, ao, ao trabalho. E se tivesse realmente essa, essas galerias, essas artes, algo que fizesse as pessoas refletirem, ou simplesmente apenas vislumbrarem algo de diferente, né, para que elas possam se distrair também, eu tenho certeza que a qualidade de vida dessas pessoas seria muito melhor. Com certeza, sem dúvidas. Mas essa foi a nossa reação para esse vídeo, então se você gostou, deixa um like aqui embaixo, aproveita também para se inscrever no canal e deixar mais sugestões. Muito obrigado por ter assistido a esse vídeo e a gente se vê na próxima reação. Tchau! Tchau.